Right now we live in an amazing time. We have hot showers, we have hot meals, we have climate controlled homes, personal security of all sorts, medicine when we fall ill, we have power tools and appliances to make our lives easier, which have simplified our daily tasks down to the mere pushing of button, and we have more entertainment at our fingertips than we could ever hope to experience. Now if in these times you can still not push yourself out of your comfort zone, knowing that all of these amenities await you when you come home from your run, from your sweat, from your toil, then what the hell makes you seriously think we're going to rise to the occasion when these things are taken away and when you have nothing but blood, sweat, and fears. If you cannot push yourself when times are good, you will most certainly perish the instant times get hard. Your ability to push yourself out of your comfort zone is a testament to your mental fortitude and a predictor of your survivability when the shit hits the fan. People who are going to survive adversity are not the ones who find it easy to make excuses for not doing things which are going to empower them when times are good. For people who can make excuses for why exercise is so hard. The people who are going to survive are the ones who are stubborn enough to resist those self-defeating voices in their head that suggest that I'm better off just sitting here watching a movie and getting more and more complacent and out of shape. The people who are going to succeed after the collapse are the ones who are willing to push themselves now, who are open to the experience of discomfort, pain, eustress, in order to transform themselves into something that is more powerful. And if you don't have the will to better yourself now, you will not have the will to preserve yourself later. It's through self-deprivation and impulse control that we grow stronger. Now the reason why some people won't survive is because they just don't want it bad enough. They simply do not love themselves enough. And I'm not talking about a narcissistic form of self-love. I'm talking about a very justified love of the rarity of your human spirit. Some people treat their life as if it's an accident, as if it's some inconsequential cosmic fluke. They don't view their lives as precious enough or worth it to hone and sculpt and to maximize their potential. They're willing to just take second best. They're willing to be subjugated. They squander their potential in exchange for a cheap dopamine dump of instant gratification. Instead of achieving the spoils brought by self-discipline, delayed gratification, and indeed enduring some form of struggle to get stronger, better, faster, wiser. Many people simply squander the good fortune of opportunity we've been granted in this society. They can make all sorts of excuses as to why their lives are not better than they are, or why they can't lose weight or they can't get in shape, and in the same breath they entertain all manner of rationalization that they'll have a fighting chance when shit hits the fan, when all they do in the here and now is avoid the fight at all costs. You have to run into the fight. I don't mean mindlessly running into traffic headstrong. I'm talking about a calculated masochism. I'm talking about enduring just the optimal amount of pain. I'm talking about pushing yourself to the limit, pushing yourself to the threshold that it's gonna take to prompt that response that's gonna make you stronger. Avoiding hardship is what makes you weak and the weak do not survive. If you lead a predominantly sedentary life right now, you absolutely will not rise to the chase of the post-collapse world. If you cannot force yourself, and I say force yourself, outside your comfort zone in any aspect of life, you absolutely will not grow. You need to understand that when you are comfortable, when things are pleasant, when things are going well, you are not growing. And I'm not saying that you cannot indulge in those times. Indeed, you must indulge in those times. You can indeed work too hard, but the reality is most people don't work nearly hard enough to push themselves into becoming what they actually could be. If and when the lights do go out, you're gonna learn real fast the limitations that your lifestyle choices have dug out for you in terms of your physical capabilities. You have an opportunity right now 
that so few in our species ever had. You have all those amenities that I talked about. You have a real fighting chance at maximizing your potential. I'm going to share with you a secret about getting stronger and overcoming laziness and weakness and preparing for shit hits the fan. Most people pull the plug long before they reach their true potential because they're being controlled by their thoughts. They're not at the helm of their decision making, rather their anxieties and depressions about the future and past are. They forgo the glory of self deprivation and impulse control for cheap instantaneous thrills that in the long term are meaningless and spiritually unfulfilling. Now a more practical term is the reason why people cannot lose weight and get in shape is simple. You simply don't want it bad enough. You simply do not value your life enough. Because if you really did want that sort of change, if you really did believe that you deserved that level of physical prosperity in your life, you'd be there already, but you're not. So in many cases, first and foremost, you need self-love. Now, the secret to what is referred to as beast mode is this. You need to be in the moment with your thoughts. The absolute key to pushing yourself to the outer limits of your capabilities, thus prompting change and thus triggering growth, is the total focus on the here and now. And you do this by thinking about nothing but your breathing. Your thoughts can be one of two things. They can be in the past or they can be in the future. They can be overly optimistic or they can be overly pessimistic. Seldom are they ever realistic. To be in the present is an entirely sensory experience. Now, if you are 80% in the moment and 20% in the future, then you will only ever reach 80% of your true potential. Transcendence happens when you turn off that voice in your head that says, I need to stop. Should I stop? I really want to stop. Maybe I should stop. When you turn off that voice in your head and you focus on your breathing, don't focus on the pain of the exercise that you're doing, but focus in between the pain. Circumvent the pain. Focus on the breaks between the pain and not the pain itself. When you're in the moment, you are unstoppable and only limited by your physical ability. When you're not, you're at the whim of your thoughts. And more often than not, our thoughts will work against us. So you need to understand first and foremost, that you need to be able to motivate yourself because you are going to be the only one there to save you. You are the one who cares most about you more than anybody else in the world, more than your mother, your father, your children, your brothers, your sisters. You are the one who cares about you most. So you need to do this for you. That's first and foremost. If you're not doing it for you, it's never ever going to work. It might work for a short period of time, but you're never going to get that intensity as you would as someone who pushes himself, who believes in himself, who wants to get stronger. You need to push yourself way outside the comfort zone in order to progress in whatever it is you're doing. Now life is like water and when the water grows stagnant, when our lives become sedentary, disease emerges, the lake becomes foul, the water becomes dirty. You have to keep the blood flowing like rapids. The key to survival is movement. As the cliche saying goes, movement indeed is life. Now we have all this shit in our lives to make our lives so much easier. And we're still so afraid of a little discomfort. And people wonder why they're so depressed in the modern day. Why there's so many depressed people walking around. Well, it's because you cannot have the sweet without the sour. If all you do is bask in the luxury of the first world, you inevitably take it for granted and all of those comforts lose their appeal over time and nothing then can please you. This is called anhedonia. It's the inability to experience pleasure. Now human beings absolutely need a certain amount of challenges in their lives in order for them to not get complacent and go down this road. Depressed, and out of shape, weak willed. The fact is it's impossible to be depressed when you are fighting for survival. Now I'm going to conclude this talk in practical terms and there's a concept in kinesiology called progressive overload. Although this concept is not only limited to the realm of motor skill development. Now the idea is that the only way to get better at a motor skill is by constantly putting the body through increasing amounts of stress. Because once your body adapts to a certain exercise, uh, it's no longer stressful. 
So, you know, what was stressful for me to do in the gym a year ago is no longer stressful today. So I need to keep raising the bar. That's progressive overload. Say, for instance, you're lifting weights and you can only lift 50 pounds for five reps at a certain exercise. It doesn't matter what exercise. Well, you lift that weight for several weeks until you can do it easily for seven or eight reps. Now it's become a relatively stress-free activity to lift that 50 pounds and your body has stopped responding to this exercise. So it has no more reason to grow stronger. It's only by increasing the weight and constantly putting yourself under more stress that you'll be able to continue to get stronger and approach that potentiality. So once you adapt to a certain skill level, it's time once again to kick it up a notch. And this is where a lot of people fail in the gym is that they get comfortable. You know, they go in and they do their half an hour run on the treadmill. You know, they're in maintenance mode. There's nothing wrong with maintenance mode if you're in reasonable shape. You know, some people I understand don't want to be GI Joe. But I can tell you right now, the more experience you have in challenging those negative thoughts in your head and being in the moment, there is nothing like exercise to simulate the experience of hardship because it's in those final moments of the run, in those final moments of the lift, in the match, whatever sport you do, that where you have to dig as deep as possible to conjure up whatever energy you can to execute the task with as much precision as possible, that's when change happens. That's what distinguishes people who will survive and people who will not. So all luck aside, the people who are gonna survive when the shit hits the fan are the ones who want to survive. Not just in a wishy-washy way, but in a way which is evidenced in how they've treated themselves before the collapse. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Hour. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.